So on today's podcast, with the recent launch of my new book, Breathing Oxygen, How Positive Leadership Gives Life to Winning Cultures, I want to talk about how triangulation, that term triangulation and team communication is essential to breathing good oxygen into ourselves, the people around us, our relationships, and ultimately how it, you know, breathe, how it allows us to breathe oxygen into the best teams. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. Welcome back to the thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Stay tuned at the end of the episode to hear from Jason about his new book, Breathing Oxygen, and a special request he has for his listeners. Hey everyone, it's Jason and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Wherever you are, however you're coming to the podcast today, so excited that you are here and that you are back to listen. I am so excited and thrilled, humbled, uh, just thrilled and excited that this podcast continues to grow and spread and reach more and more people. So thank you to everybody out there who uh, shares it and, uh, you know, has uh, let us know that this is meaningful to you and, uh, that it's adding value to your own thinking, your life, your career, your team, your organization. Uh, That's why uh, we're doing it. So thank you. And uh, I'd also just remind you that my commitment to you is that this is going to be a place for you uh, to hopefully that it breathes good oxygen into you, helps you get clear on your own thermostat, the person that you're trying to be, who you want to be in the world, and uh, and then showing up to, uh, to breathe oxygen into yourself and to the people around you. So Uh, I know that we need this more than ever. We need authentic leaders. We need compelling cultures in the world right now. That's just what we need. And so I'm excited to uh, hopefully this to be a contribution into your thinking, your the minds and hearts of a lot of people. So thank you. If you will do a quick favor and just rate this podcast, hopefully five stars, wherever you're listening to it, if you will leave a positive review, um, that those are ways in which this helps other people find it, helps amplify this message. Also, if you, you know, if there's episodes that resonate with you, share them with your friends, your colleagues, those around you, share on social media, whatever's authentic for you. But if you share it, uh, that allows other people to enter this conversation. And I'm so grateful for everybody that does that. Thank you. So on today's podcast, with the recent launch of my new book, Breathing Oxygen, How Positive Leadership Gives Life to Winning Cultures, I want to talk about how triangulation, that term triangulation and team communication is essential to breathing good oxygen into ourselves, the people around us, our relationships, and ultimately how it, you know, breathe, how it allows us to breathe oxygen into the best teams. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. But let's take a break. Let's pause for a second and we'll be right back. If you haven't done so already, we hope you'll visit Amazon or Amplify or JasonVBarger.com to check out Breathing Oxygen, my new book that is all about breathing good oxygen into ourselves and mindsets that fuel ourselves and the teams and the organizations around us. Positive, healthy thinking is as essential to great leadership and building a winning culture as the air we breathe. Leading yourself and a team of people has never been more complicated than it is today. As a leader, every move you make is either breathing life into your organization or slowly killing it. The atmosphere can easily turn toxic with negativity, blame, and and doubt poisoning the culture. Just like every being on the planet needs good air to breathe, every organization needs leadership that breathes life into its people to sustain the energy required to complete its mission. Breathing Oxygen focuses on six key leadership mindsets that breathe life into any team. Clarity, inclusivity, mental agility, grit, rest, and ownership. Join us, read, and share 
breathing oxygen. Available now from Amplify Books on Amazon and jasonvbarger.com. First off today, I just want to say thank you uh, again. Thank you to everybody out there. We are still in the mode of the f- first few weeks of Breathing Oxygen launching in the world. And so thank you to everybody out there who has helped uh, share the book. Uh, I've received so many great messages from people of how the book is resonating with them, the content, and the messages of the book, how it's adding value to themselves, to the team and organization they serve. So that's the most important thing to me. So thank you to everybody out there who's been uh, you know, getting the book, reading the book, sharing the book, all those things, and then and then letting uh, letting me know that that's just so helpful to me in the work that I'm trying to do in the world, and it engages my mind and my heart, and allows me to then uh, hopefully uh, be the best uh, steward and support to the people around me. So thank you for everybody that does that. Today we're talking about triangulation and team communication and how essential that is to creating healthy cultures but also how important it is to breathe life and energy into the cultures that we want to create. Or in many cases, it can kind of take the oxygen from the people around us if we aren't good about uh, leading healthy conversation and dialogue and and, and really uh, how we communicate as a team can really take the oxygen out of the room and really ruin it for so many people, which then leads to all those bad things like uh, not retaining the people we want, uh, high turnover rates, lower performance, all of those things, and just lower satisfaction from humans. So let's first dive into this and let's define what we mean by triangulation if you haven't heard that term before. Triangulation is a group dynamic that takes place wherever there are more than three people gathered, which is, you know, most families, most, you know, meetings, most friend groups, most communities, of course, and every team and organization on the planet where there are humans this happens. This happens everywhere. So don't think that you are separate from it. If you think you have a good, a great team, it just probably means that you are better at dealing with what we're about to talk about. But this phenomenon, this dynamic happens wherever there are three or more people gathered. You know how it goes. There's person A, person B, and person C in a triangle. And person A and person B have a challenge with each other. Sometimes it's a small thing, sometimes it's a big thing, but it could be that a project didn't go the way that you hoped it would, a meeting, you know, there was something said in a meeting that, uh, you know, hurt somebody's feelings. It could be A and B just, you know, think differently or disagree on something or, you know, uh, something, uh, you know, you hit that send on that email before you wish, you know, you had. There's a disagreement or a confrontation or just a challenge between person A and person B. And in every group dynamic, who does person B go find? That's right, person C. So person C becomes the third part of the triangle. And person C in every group or team on the planet, every uh, you know friend group, community group, organizational group, team group, plays an enormous role. And often as leaders, uh, we find ourselves in the role of person C because people often seek us out to say, hey, I need to come talk to you about what happened with person A. Uh, All of us, of course, as humans, we find ourselves in the roles of person A, B, and C. So we all rotate throughout these roles in different situations in our lives. But in leadership roles, we often can find ourselves in the role of person C quite often. So person C, again, plays an enormous role in how this conversation goes, because person, you know, B typically comes to them and, and, and usually, it, you know, I dramatize it a little bit in this, but, it, you know, it starts with something like, oh, can you believe what person A did, right? And person B begins to explain the situation and typically it's a biased, you know, one-sided view of it, but all the ways in which person A let them down, Uh, all the ways in which person A was a bad person or made a bad decision or didn't do what they hoped to do or just, you know, uh, disgruntled and uh, an uncomfortable situation has occurred. And so person B, you know, uh, quote unquote, vents to person C about this. And the reason this happens again, I hope you hear, hear me saying this, this happens to all of us. We all play the roles of person A, B, and C in our lives. So, Person C, though, in the midst of that situation that happens all the time, makes an, an enormous choice in, in this situation because they typically can go one of two paths. 
the first path they can take, which unfortunately leads to unhealthy and kind of toxic cultures, is that they can choose to breathe oxygen into the flames, which means they listen to person B and they say, oh my gosh, person A did what? I can't believe they did that. Oh my gosh, you're right. That is awful. That, oh my gosh. And really without having the full story, they oftentimes just listen to the one biased opinion and one vantage point of the situation and jump to conclusions that person A must be a bad person, this must be awful, and oftentimes in really dramatic team communication or a gossipy kind of cultures, is that it all of a sudden now the person is actually throwing gasoline on the fire and breathing oxygen into the flames, and the flames just keep getting bigger. By the end of the conversation, person B somehow feels better because they quote-unquote got to vent uh, to somebody, and in some kind of understandable way, person C feels a little bit better because person B chose them to come talk to, and so it feels good that somebody wants to come talk to you about it. And you can rationalize it as person C to think that you've somehow allowed them to quote-unquote vent. But at the end of the exchange, nothing has really gotten better. In fact, the flames have kind of gotten worse and gotten bigger and have become now a challenge. And at the end of the situation, both parties walk away, and now nothing is resolved, and actually there's a bigger fire that is just kind of brewing between person A, B, and now C. That's one path that person C, a choice that they can make, is to breathe oxygen into the flames. In healthy cultures, teams that are committed to higher standards and higher a commitment to each other as relationships and as an actual team and the way that we communicate, it doesn't mean they're perfect. No team or organization or person or leader on the planet is. But when we have a higher standard, a commitment to communicating better and differently, person C then makes the other choice, goes down another path, and instead of breathing oxygen into the flames, they breathe oxygen into the person. And the way they do that is they listen to person B. They listen to them and they absorb whatever that may be because sometimes we all just need somebody to talk to. And so you listen to it and and, and you say, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I I can tell that you're frustrated. That must be, you know, challenging for you. They listen, they absorb, they they, um, care for the person that is breathing, that is bringing this information to them, but they're not throwing gasoline on the fire or or breathing oxygen into the flames, they're going to breathe oxygen into the person. And at the right time, and this is where it's an art form, person C, after listening and absorbing this and, and really caring for the person who's bringing this, then makes the choice to say, I appreciate what you're sharing with me, but it sounds like this is a situation between you and person A. And really what it sounds like is that you and person A need to have a courageous conversation about this. And if this is is really becoming this big of a deal for you, then I really encourage you to have that direct communication because I know person A, and my guess is they didn't mean it that way. Something got lost in translation. Maybe they have a different perspective. Whatever that may be, I encourage you so that this doesn't just stew with you or with them is to go back and have a direct, courageous conversation with them so that you can find a solution of how you're going to move forward. And because I'm, your, I'm a friend to you and I'm going to support you, I'm going to check back with you in a week and see how that conversation went. They breathe oxygen into the person and into the people and into the situation rather than just throwing gasoline on the fire and assuming that everything is going to be all right. So... Oftentimes when I'm describing this triangulation and team communication, I often ask uh, you know teams that I support over a longer period of time or when I'm talking about this at a keynote speech or as a part of a, uh, you know, a workshop or a, a team retreat or something, I often ask the people, is this realistic? Is what I'm describing, is it realistic? And oftentimes some people say no. And they start to say it's really difficult and it's really and then somebody says, well, it's realistic, but it's and eventually the conversation evolves to the point where we all agree in the room that it's realistic. Yes, it is realistic. But is it difficult? Absolutely. Is it difficult? It's not easy. 
of course. It is realistic, but it does take practice and it's not easy. We, we don't, this is a pattern that many of us as humans have gotten into because it fuels us in a lot of way. It makes us feel better. And we often seek out people that will just tell us what we need to hear or vent to people that will not challenge us to find a solution, but just allow us to just complain about something else. That's a human behavior. So in healthy leaders and healthy teams and healthy cultures, and again, no one is perfect, none of us are, but in the ones that are committed to raising those standards, in healthy leaders, teams, and cultures, we practice this kind of team communication in this way that models and shows this to other people, that we are committed to breathing oxygen into the person and into the people rather than into the flames. And this is just how we breathe. We start to practice and model and commit that this is our commitment to one another to be a part of this team. So this is the temperature that we set for how we communicate, how we honor each other in our relationships and on our teams and in our organizations, how we build trust with one another. This is just going to be how we're going to commit to doing this. And it's, it's really, in the best teams, it's how we walk the talk of being a quote-unquote team. We're going to show you, we're going to walk the talk, and we're going to show you that when things get tough or courageous, we actually go have those conversations. Uh, the Gottman Institute out of Seattle, they did a study once uh, of couples, actually, that then came into group dynamics and, and organizations as well. But they studied couples uh, and watched the way they communicated with each other. And what they quickly found is over all this research was that that there's a five to one ratio, a five to one ratio, positive to negative interactions as they would watch couples communicate with each other, that they could pretty accurately uh, predict whether a couple was going to make it together, whether they were going to stay together for the long haul or where or whether they were going to explode and, and or whether they were just destined to kind of go different directions very quickly and with great accuracy they were able to to uh you know predict these things based on what they referred to as this kind of 5 to 1 ratio healthy couples that lasted and grew together doesn't mean they were perfect but were together for the long term and again you think about this in terms of teams and organizations the ones that last and are together and aligned together the Gottman Institute found had a 5 to 1 ratio Five positive interactions doesn't just mean kind of blowing smoke at somebody, but really training our eyes and our mindset to catch each other and to affirm each other, respect each other, honor each other, and and have five positive interactions for every negative interaction. Doesn't mean they don't have negative interactions. All of us do. But they, they really balance that with that the, the, the foundation of their relationship is out of positive support and alignment with each other in relationships that they could quickly uh, point out were not going to make it. That ratio was more like one to one or even less, you know, 0.8 to one. Uh, and so it makes us think about what is that ratio for that we are breathing in and enhancing within our own teams And leaders who understand this and teams and organizations that are committed to this, to helping their people breathe better, not only because, again, it's the right thing to do because that's the first reason we ought to do it, but also because it helps our performance expand. These leaders, teams, and organizations realize they need to continuously be in the business of helping people model, show up, practice. This is how we communicate with each other. And in the triangulation that's going to happen, this is how we're going to be committed to handling it. We're going to breathe oxygen into the people, not just into the flames. Team communication isn't something that just naturally comes together. Like anything, we have to teach it. You've heard me talk about, and you can listen to past episodes where I've talked about what we allow lingers, the things, the habits, the behaviors, the structures, the language we use, the habits that we allow that are counter to what we really want, the culture we want, those things tend to linger and fester and become the culture. But yet when we teach different things, teach in alignment with what we want, it triggers a different positive chain reaction. So we need to be in the business of teaching, practicing, modeling, showing people this is how we 
communicate. This is our standard for how we're going to work together. We model it, we practice it, we develop it, and we rinse and repeat this. And eventually, years and years down the road, people make the comment like, this is just how we do it here. This is just our culture. It just becomes kind of the air that they breathe. But it becomes that way. It's hard for them in the moment to see this, but it became that way because of countless intentional actions along the way over the course of years of people modeling, practicing, showing this up, showing this way to people, that of, of practicing intentionally, this is how we breathe, this is how we communicate, this is what we're committed to. So this week, you know, just like always, I'm going to leave you with some questions to ponder. Reflect on a situation or time when you were a part of that triangulation experience and how it played out. Reflect. Reflect on it. How did it play out for you? One of those situations where maybe you were person A, B, or C in the triangle. And what ways could people have breathed oxygen into the person or into the people involved rather than the flames? And what does your team need to practice or breathe next? Lastly, I'll just share this quickly about the book. Again, many people have talked about the launch of the book and have been so excited about it. And, and then I've also said, hey, is there anything more I can do to help with the launch? Because is the launch over? And I, what I quickly say is, well, no, the launch is never over. You know, we're, the book's only a few weeks old, so we're still uh, hoping to spread it and share it as far as we can in the world. So if that's authentic for you and you want to help, uh, first way you can do it is order the book. If you haven't gotten the book already, uh, get it, you know, Amazon, Amplify, Barnes & Noble, wherever it is that you get books. Uh, I'd invite you to get it and, and, and more importantly, to read it. I want people to actually read the book and it impact them. And, and then I'd love to hear kind of how it resonated with you. So get the book and read it. Second way you can help is to share it. If and only if it's something that resonates with you and you think it's worth sharing in the world, share it with other people. Share the messages on social media or with your team, your organization, colleagues around the world. Share it with them. Gift copies if you're in a position to do that. You know, help it spread. Breathe oxygen into other people. That's one of the ways you can help. And then lastly, the third thing you can do is reviews. Uh, w whether I like it or not, this is the way that the algorithms work. So every time you rate the book and leave a positive review on Amazon or whatever platform you, know, you buy the book from, that helps other people find it. So reviews and ratings are so important, and the publisher keeps telling me this. So uh, if you can order the book and read it, share it with other people, and leave reviews, uh, that is super helpful and if you have other ideas, you can always track us down at info at jasonvbarger.com and tell your ideas, and we'll see if we can help. All of us have the opportunity each day to breathe in appreciation and gratitude for all that's within our control. Now is our chance to positively impact those, you know, our own life, but those around us on the journey and kind of breathe oxygen into the mindsets that we want to fuel. As we calibrate our own personal thermostat, our own awareness, of who we want to be, what we're trying to accomplish as a team or as a group or as a relationship, then we can use that awareness to say, what are, we are the thermostats. What temperature are we going to set? And then how are we going to continually show up to breathe oxygen into the mindsets and actions that we need to stimulate progress? I hope you'll keep tuning in. There are many great episodes and topics on the horizon next. Remember, the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet stimulate progress by recalibrating their thermostat and then breathing oxygen into themselves and other people to set that temperature together. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using and share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you. 
is me, is us. Be a thermostat. Lastly, on today's podcast, I'll just say this, that many of you of you have reached out and continue to share excitement around breathing oxygen that it's still launching and wondering, hey, how can I still help? Well, there are a couple of quick ways, if you're wondering about that, a couple of quick ways that you can, you know, again, the book launched, you know, technically it's out there and available for anybody, but it is still launching. <laughs> you know, the launch is never over. So uh, if you authentically want to help, here are some ways you can. You can obviously order the book. Uh, get the book, and I would encourage you to that that helps the launch. So wherever that is, whether Amazon or Amplify or Barnes and Noble or wherever you get books, uh, go get it. And and then also uh, more importantly than that is read it. I, I I didn't write books just so people would would get them. I, I wrote I wrote the book because I want it to resonate with people and impact people and organizations. So uh, read it. Uh, that's one of the ways in which you can help uh, the launch and share what resonates with you. The second part is share it. So just as I just said, if and only if it resonates with you, share it with the people around you, uh, share it on social media or with your networks or share it with your your team, your colleagues, uh, you know, gift copies to people if you're in a position to do that. Share it if it's if it's uh, something that's redeeming and worthy of sharing. Uh, that's the way anything spreads in the world. world. So I invite you to share it with other people. And then the third thing that I ask that's really important, and people keep telling me how important this is, is to leave uh, ratings and reviews on Amazon and wherever it is that you get the book. If you can uh, rate it, hopefully five stars. If you can leave a positive, authentic review from you about what your thoughts are about the book, those are the ways in which it helps other people find it and spreads uh, to other people. So thank you to everybody who either, you know, orders it and reads it shares it with other people, and leaves reviews. Those are the ways you can help with this launch as it continues to reach further into the world. If you have other ideas that you want to share or ideas about sharing with more people, you can email us directly, info at jasonvbarger.com. Tell us your ideas, and we'll see what we can do to help. Breathe in appreciation and gratitude for all that is within your control. Uh, Now is a chance for all of us to kind of breathe in good oxygen in our life and our work and our teams Uh, and give energy to the people around us as we calibrate our own personal thermostat for our own awareness of ourself and thinking about who we want to be and how we want to contribute to the teams and the people around us. We we need to use that awareness to kind of breathe oxygen into the habits we form so that we can be the thermostat that we want to be for other people. And we know that once we understand the temperature that we're trying to set as a team or as an organization, like we talk about in thermostat cultures, then we know that we're going to have to keep it going. In order to keep it going, we're going to need to breathe oxygen into ourselves and to the people around us to fuel the mindsets that are going to bring out the best in each other. So I hope you'll keep turning, tuning in to the podcast. The next episode is going to be about a conversation about triangulation and team communication and how the habits we form with the relationships in our culture either breathe oxygen into people or they breathe oxygen into the flames. Remember, the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet stimulate progress by recalibrating their thermostat together and then commit to breathing oxygen into themselves and to the people around them. Set the temperature and breathe good oxygen. I wrote Breathing Oxygen because I needed to breathe in good oxygen in my own life. And what I'm finding is that other people needed it too. There continues to be high levels of uncertainty and change and division and angst and so much that seems out of our control. It's challenging for individuals and teams and organizations to navigate their way forward. And it's easy to get sucked into negative and toxic mindsets and actions. We all know there are oxygen givers and oxygen takers in every room and in every organization on the planet. And so leaders and teams need to be deliberate about what is the air that they breathe and the mindsets that they feed. When we breathe in good, healthy mindsets, our performance expands. And when we breathe in toxic and negative mindsets of gossip and blame, our performance deflates. Breathing Oxygen focuses on six key mindsets. Mindsets of clarity, of inclusivity, mental agility, grit, rest, and ownership and positive accountability. 
Positive leadership is about being honest and transparent about the challenges we're facing and still choosing to be optimistic and believing that we can create a better future. Winning cultures doesn't just mean winning the contest or becoming best in class or the best at whatever it is that you do, although I hope and we aim for that too. A winning culture is one that is authentic, where people are aligned around creating a compelling culture together that also produces results. Research and data continues to tell us that people want to be a part of a more meaningful culture, that they want to be a part of something greater than self, that they want to contribute, they want to develop, and they want to share in the creation of a compelling culture. But as I talk about in my book, Thermostat Cultures, it won't just happen magically on its own. We have to lead the change that we want and intentionally set the temperature at all levels of the company and then breathe oxygen into it to keep it going. We all know that culture shaping never stops. We just have to continuously breathe good oxygen.